I went to Wikipedia and I decided to pick up the definition for an equivalent there. And I actually didn't find it too useful, but there are some things that I wanted to point out. So it says the equivalent is formally defined as the amount of a substance which will either react or supply with one mole of hydrogen ions in an acid-base reaction or do the same with one mole of electrons in a redox reaction. So, so all I've really figured out so far, I was a little confused when I read this, but I figured out um, what they're saying is that an equivalent is basically some amount, some number, right? So let's start there. So when someone says, hey, how many equivalents do you have? I know that they're talking about some number. So equivalent is equal to, and this is for some ion, right? So, so for some ion uh, of my choosing, an equivalent equals some number, and, and usually that number is in terms of moles. So some number of moles that I need, so needed, to balance something. So I'm, I'm actually balancing some charge. So balance the charge of an oppositely charged, so an opposite charge, opposite monovalent. Actually, I should even add balance charge of, I guess I can add it without erasing, charge of one mole. That's actually really important of an oppositely charged monovalent. Okay, so uh, let's, let's jump into an example because I think that will clear up any confusion that you may have uh, to this point. So let's say we're talking about, for some ion, let's say we're, we pick potassium, okay? We, here's our potassium. And I've got to balance out one mole of an oppositely charged monovalent. So this is um, my little line uh, demarking the other side. So on the other side, let's say we have chloride. And chloride is oppositely charged. It's negative, right? And it's a monovalent. It's, it's not negative 2 or negative 3. It's just negative 1, right? So we've got, let's say, a mole of these. Because the, the definition I wrote up just said that I needed a mole of an oppositely charged, and, and as I'm writing this up, I'm realizing, and I hope you are too, that there's no way in the world I can write up a mole of this stuff. There's no way, right? So let me just get the point across. That Just imagine that there are a total of uh, this many, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd chlorides, because that's really the question. How many potassiums do you need to balance out the charge from all of those chlorides? And that's too big a number, too big a number to write out in any easy way other than to say, well, maybe you need some number of moles of potassium. And that's why I wrote um, that right into the definition. So, so let's figure this out. So we know that potassium binds one-to-one uh, -one with chloride, right? We know that's what happens. So when potassium's floating around and it's going to bump into chloride, it's going to go one-to-one. -one. So we know that for one chloride we're going to get one potassium. And so that means that for one mole of chlorides, we're going to get one mole of potassiums bound to them, right? And that's going to balance out the charge perfectly. So if someone says, well, how many equivalents do you have for, for potassium? That seems like a very simple answer. Well, you'd say, okay, well, one equivalent, one equivalent would then be one mole of potassium. Or you could even rephrase it. You could say, well, one mole of potassium. And this is how people usually use the phrase. They say, well, one mole of potassium equals one equivalent. So I know that's, that's the same thing flipped around, but that's how people usually state it. So now let's do a slightly more challenging example. And you'll see where this um, becomes a little different. So instead of potassium, let me jump into another one. Let's do uh, calcium. calcium. So here's a plus two. And same thing as before, I'm going to have to choose some uh, oppositely charged monovalent. And I'm going to pick the same one, right? Because this still is oppositely charged. I just needed some negatively charged monovalent, and chloride suits our purposes. And we know, just as before, we need a whole mole of them. And so if that's the case, how many calciums... Uh, will bind to a chloride and vice versa. How many chlorides will bind to a calcium? So let's imagine uh, we have little chloride and calcium party and they kind of meet each other. Well, what's going to happen is that you're going to have a calcium there and a chloride there and a chloride there, right? Because this will come here, this will come here. And they're going to basically bind and make 
this. They're going to make CaCl2 because the chlorides are only one negative charge. Oh, let me actually, and this is two negative positive charges. I'm flipping around my negatives and positives. Sorry about that. There we go. Negative, negative, and plus two. So you know that for every one calcium, you're going to get two chlorides. So let me write that out uh, very clearly. So for every one, for every one calcium, or actually I can write uh, for every two chlorides, you get one calcium, right? And that means that for every, if I divide both sides by two, for every one chloride, I basically needed a half a calcium. And that's not how we think about it uh, usually because it's hard to imagine a half a calcium, but at least the math works out there. And so if I'm talking about one mole of chloride, one mole of chloride, then I'm left saying, well, then I have a half a mole of calcium. So far, so good. And so then one equivalent, going back to our definition, equals uh, one half mole of calcium. And I said that we could flip around the equation, and we can. We could say, well, then one mole, now all I did is multiplied uh, both sides by two, one mole of calcium, oh, I'm not writing clearly right now, sorry, one mole of calcium equals two equivalents. So there is how people usually phrase it. They'll say, okay, well, how many um, equivalents do you get for one mole of something? And so here you would say the answer is two. And so I just want to point out something to you, which is that we kind of did this a long way, but here is a quick and dirty way. You could say, well, I know that calcium is divalent, and we know that potassium was monovalent, and here is kind of an interesting pattern that's emerging, right? Like, as the Ca plus 2 emerged, we got two equivalents out of it. Let's test this with a third one. Let's just see um, what we get if we use, let's say, nitrogen. So let's do nitrogen. Nitrogen is negative 3, and I have to create my boundary. And on the other side, I need some oppositely charged monovalent. So here's a monovalent, and it's opposite. Here's monovalent, check and it's oppositely charged, check, opposite. Opposite of the negative, right? So check, check, it meets our requirements. And I need a mole of them, so I have to draw out a mole, and you know there's no way I can do that, as I said before. And so just imagine one mole of these guys. And the question again is, how much nitrogen do I need to balance all this out? And I'm gonna just underline in red the, the clue. So here's the clue. And let's now actually go through the steps of figuring it out kind of the longer way. So let's imagine you have a nitrogen here, negative 3, and it's going to be at this, let's say, cocktail party, and it meets some protons. And in this case, three of them come by. So it's going to form NH3, right? NH3. If we say three protons then come together with one nitrogen, which is what we just said. Then I can divide both sides by three, and I can see that one proton then comes with one-third of a nitrogen. So far, so good. And I can then even go on to say one mole of protons, which is, going back to our definition, would be balanced out by one-third of a mole of nitrogen. And if that's the case, then I can say, well, one equivalent equals a third of a mole of nitrogen. And I'm going to flip this around uh, just as we did before. I could say uh, then one, let me change that. I could say then one mole of nitrogen equals three equivalents. And Remember, we underlined that little three in the beginning, and I'm going to underline it again. And now you can very clearly see the pattern that's emerging. So you can see that any time you look at the uh, cation or anion that you're talking about, if you look at the number, like if it's, let's say, uh, magnesium that's 2 plus or calcium is 2 plus, then you, can, then you can know immediately that that probably means that if you did the, the work the long way like we just did, 
that the equivalents are going to work out to the same number. So nitrogen has three equivalents, magnesium or calcium have two equivalents, and potassium and chloride, they all have one equivalent. So that's what equivalents mean in terms of the moles uh, needed to balance out uh, charge on the opposite side.